When handling all instruments, safety and economy of movement is essential. Relaxed handling is needed in order to avoid awkward movements. Safe and effective surgery requires correct and safe handling of all surgical instruments and sutures. Please take time to acquaint yourself with the instruments provided. Let's first of all look at the scalpel. When handling the scalpel, you do not handle it like this or like this, as you don't intend to stab anyone. Instead, handle it in this manner, using your index finger to steady it. Then you can draw it gently and carefully across the skin, as you see here, in a controlled manner. Never, ever cut towards your own fingers or thumb, as it may not just be the patient that you cut. When doing delicate work with a fine bladed scalpel, you may wish to hold it like a pen. Then finer work can be undertaken. Note how the little finger can be used to steady the hand holding the scalpel. When passing a scalpel, never pass it blade first, but handle first with the blade down. However, the safest way is always to put it into a kidney dish and pass it to your assistant or scrub nurse. Now, let's look at the scissors. There are two types of scissors. One is more robust for cutting suture materials, and the other is finer for tissue dissection. Let's look at how to hold scissors. Hold them with just the tips of the distal phalanges with thumb and ring finger in the rings, steadying the scissors with the index finger and the middle finger. Never put your fingers right the way through, as this makes it difficult to extract your fingers from the instrument. However, by using just the distal phalanges, you get very good control for accurate dissection. If you're cutting sutures at depth, such as in the pelvis, it's often wise to stabilize the instrument over your index finger. This allows for accurate cutting and prevents a tremor down a deep, dark hole. We now move on to the forceps. There are two basic types of forceps. One is the non-toothed, the other the toothed. If we take the toothed forceps, such as we see here, these are often used for tough tissues such as skin. While the non-toothed forceps tend to be used for more delicate tissues such as bowel. Hold the forceps as you see demonstrated here and not grasped in your fist like this. By holding them gently, you get accurate control of the tips of the forceps. Now, let us consider the hemostat. Correct handling of the hemostat is critical. Pick it up much as we did with the scissors, using the distal phalanges, and, as one is opening them, put pressure on the thumb against the ring finger and middle finger, and then the hemostat opens gently in a controlled manner. If holding it in your non-dominant hand, you might wish to hold it in this manner, and then put pressure from the middle and ring finger against the thumb and index finger, and open the hemostat in a controlled manner. Watch again pressure from the middle and ring finger against the thumb and the index finger and it opens smoothly. Do not let the hemostat jerk as this can do damage to any blood vessel it might be holding. Finally we come to the needle holder. As mentioned previously always pick up the needle with the forceps then pick up the needle holder in a similar manner to the scissors and the hemostat. Place the needle holder about two-thirds of the way round the circumference of the needle, as you see here. Do not place it too near to the tip or to the rear of the needle. 
place it in the tips of the needle holder as demonstrated. Insertion of sutures requires a smooth supination of the forearm. But occasionally a backhanded suture is required, in which case the needle position can be changed in the needle holder, enabling you to insert a backhand suture. Practice this change of position in the needle holder. To do so, grasp the needle with the forceps, and then, by supinating one forearm and pronating the other forearm, the position can be changed quite easily by just releasing gently the jaws of the needle holder. Thank you.